And you have, you know, frankly, personal experience with uh, the realities of what the CCP is all about. And I actually want to take a moment to yeah. get you to tell me a little bit about that. Because a lot of people, again, just can't even imagine some of the things that you yourself have actually experienced. Um, I always uh, use uh, two words to describe um, my life, no escape. Um, I was born in a re-education camp during the height of the Cultural Revolution, where my young mother was detained uh, because of her relationship with her dad, my grandfather, who was a Uyghur nationalist. And also, um, uh, my dad, my father, uh, a university-educated father, was sent to a labor camp for three years in a countryside. So not only newly vetted couple being separated uh, by the government, but also my mom, my mother, who was uh, uh, pregnant with me when she was taken into the re-education camp, went through physical verbal abuses and delivered me while she was uh, injured, um, uh, while she was in cast chest down. So I was born in such a horrific uh, circumstances, but after coming to the United States, uh, establishing my professional life, uh, establishing a happy family life, I never thought until 2018, summer 2018, that I would even mention the way that I was born to this world. Because people need to know that this is not something new. This has been ongoing as long as I have been breathing. But the, the circumstances uh, kind of compel me to come out and say, look, I've seen this movie before. I asked you to pay attention, but you did not. Now we have a much bigger problem the Chinese Communist Party managed to establish or build industrial scale uh, concentration camps on World's Watch, uh, making never again a meaningless vow. And uh, sadly, no one is raising a finger uh, until the United States government, uh, starting 2019, speaking up publicly and responding with some unprecedented historic measurements. This has been part of the Uyghur life for a long time. Uh, the Uyghur people uh, around the world, uh, NGOs, human rights activists, had been sounding the alarm that this needs to be uh, something that people should take it seriously. But it took a genocide uh, in Uyghur's homeland, East Turkestan, and uprooting of a democracy, uh, rule of law in Hong Kong, and, uh, and most oppressive ways to oppress, uh, repress the religious minority in China, to, uh, 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 to world community and national community to, to realize CCP is a threat to a civilization. So uh, it's, it's very sad reality, but it should not take a genocide for the national community to realize what CCP is, is about. So these, and the measure, you, of course, you mean the genocide designation, is that what you're talking about? Genocide designation was one of the most significant uh, policy responses uh, by the United States government. But before even that decision, uh, from October 2019 through January 2021, uh, the previous administration um, announced over 70 sanctions. Uh, I'm talking about the individual sanctions that includes uh, blacklisting of uh, entities um, uh, under the statute that the Commerce Department was authorized to do, and also sanctioning of four Chinese uh, senior government officials, including the current pa pa Chinese Communist Party chairman, uh, Chen Chuan Guo, and also uh, Xinjiang Production Construction Corp, which is a paramilitary unit, uh, reportedly has uh, over 800,000 uh, shell companies around the world, and also visa restrictions that uh, you're aware of. So uh, that was the policy responses. This does not even include the legislative responses that we've been seeing uh, in the US Congress. So um, the, the January decision is, uh, is the strongest policy response announced by former Secretary of State uh, Pompeo endorsed on the same day by the new uh, Secretary of State uh, Blinken. This shows the uh, seriousness of the United States government. Uh, USERF, uh, as we noted in our report, uh, not only asked the State Department to look into this uh, to evaluate and determine if the atrocities amount to genocide and crimes against humanity, but also we support this bipartisan uh, decision. Uh, this should send a message to Beijing that they cannot play division game with American people. This is a matter of value and principle. 
United States government, uh, just like the Chinese government, is a signatory to the um, Genocide Convention uh, that our country ratified in 1988. Since 1988, there has been only five decisions uh, adding the Uyghurs. There have been only six instances that the U.S. government made a similar decision. Um, I need to highlight something very important um, in this respect. The United States, uh, uh, or any country, does not lightly or casually go out and accuse somebody or government or government entities for committing genocide. This is a very serious, serious uh, awards, um, accusations, if you will. Uh, but when you look at the way that this was done uh, through uh, analysis, relying on the fact, and also fulfilling our uh, obligation on the international law, is something that the United States government, particularly uh, Secretary Pompeo, deserves a lot of credit. It was a bold decision, and I, uh, Secretary Blinken also deserves credit for acknowledging, uh, endorsing it, and taking additional measures, including the uh, coordinated uh, sanctions announced uh, in March, uh, along with our allies. And now we see in this expanding Canadian parliament recognize it as a genocide, so that the Netherlands um, parliament, or that the UK parliament, uh, we're also expecting others joining the force. So the United States has shown true leadership on this. Uh, this has been a bipartisan, and this should be a strong message to China that uh, this is not something that we will um, uh, uh, take lightly. Uh, this is a matter of uh, conscience, matter of principle. Uh, this is not only a moral obligation, but the United States is legally obliged to respond on these kind of atrocities. So you've just watched a clip from an American Thought Leader's interview, and as you probably know, I pour my heart and soul into these. YouTube has been censoring some entirely mainstream videos lately, including things like Florida Governor DeSantis's coronavirus roundtable. We've even had some of our own videos removed from YouTube for no clear reason whatsoever. And frankly, I don't find this to be appropriate. I don't find this to be acceptable. I don't want to be sitting around thinking what YouTube may or may not feel like they want to censor. And beyond that even, YouTube has demonetized us for the past two months. Ostensibly, we're working to resolve the issue, but our hopes are kind of fading when it comes to this. So what is our response to this? Well, we've started our own platform, Epoch TV. Now, Epoch TV is the premium Epoch Times video platform. It's got American thought leaders, but it also has The Larry Elder Show and Crossroads with Joshua Phillip and a number of other programs. So you can get Epoch TV for this low introductory rate of $4.99 a month. And in so doing, you're actually supporting the Epoch Times as an organization. You're supporting uncensored news. You're supporting groundbreaking investigative reporting. And you're supporting these deep dive interviews that I love doing so much. Please join us.